All right, good afternoon. It's 4 o'clock. We're calling the Recreation JAC meeting to order. I don't see any visitors in the room, so we'll start off with the amenity reports. Macy, you want to lead us off? Sure. So I went to Metfield yesterday. Um, it was beautiful. You couldn't have asked for a better day. Um, I saw a middle-aged gentleman and a his, I guess, son playing basketball. And I watched them play briefly, and all of a sudden, the ball, the, their basketball went flying across the street down into that ravine. So the boy had to go down into the ravine to get it. Um, the member interaction I had was with the, the gentleman, and he suggested that maybe we could look into putting up a fence around, not, not actually around it, but on that side of the basketball court, just to keep the ball from rolling down into that, rolling across the street and down into that ravine. It would be a safety issue if kids, young kids were playing and took off after a ball. Um, so that's, that's one thing. The bathrooms I noticed could use some going over the vent in the ladies bathroom for sure. Um, looked dingy and just needs a good cleaning. And I'm probably sure that's probably going to hold true with the, the men's bathroom. The door on the female, on the women's restroom could use some attention on the inside. It looks like there's um, feces there again. Not for sure. I wasn't going to go stick my nose in it or really look at it hard, but it, um, yeah, it needs a good scrub. Um, the Metfield Complex looks really good. I really like the layout that Joan that you have that you have done, especially with the bikes. Moving them into that big open room has really given the bikes more room to spread out for sure. And it's made the recreation or not the recreation, I'm sorry, the workout room look bigger than what it really is. Um, I didn't really have any interactions over there with anybody other than the front desk. And she said that um, from what she, as, as of right now, from what she knows, there's been no complaints about the setup, moving people from Reardon and all the equipment from Reardon to Metfield. People seem to be taking it in stride and seem to understand why it's there. Um, and that's all I have. Macy, thank you. I'll do Branchwood next. I was out there a week ago Sunday. It was a beautiful day, but it was the lowest activity level I've seen out there in a long time. Um, unfortunately, the dry weather has really affected our grass. Holes 13, just below 12, and just at 8. Really, I've never seen them look like that, but um, it's the weather. Um, the starting pad for hole number 2 sits right next to a maintenance shed, and the... Um, from an aesthetic standpoint, perhaps we could look at that shed with some painting and, and some cleanup around it because we have our customers standing right there next to it. Pickleball courts three and six didn't have a scoreboard, I noticed. I don't know if that was intentional or we just hadn't. Uh, the, all the other. They, they were stolen. Lovely. Likely stolen. Oh, okay. I did never notice before. Allegedly stolen. Okay. Uh, they're, they were there. They're missing now. Okay. Noted. And then the only other thing was there's a sign ta or attached to the fence for court rotation, directions on co court rotation, but it was really badly ripped and you can't read it. So if we still need it, it should be replaced. Not our sign. Somebody's probably okay. renegade, but I'll check it out. All right. Because the, the, all the rules are up on the permanent sign. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I have a feeling somebody put that up. Okay. Wasn't I'll, aware. I'll try and get it removed. Yeah, wasn't aware. Is it an eight and a half by 11? Yeah, paper laminated. On the gate? I don't know if it's on the gate, but it's on the fence. Yeah. 
Um, and since I didn't see anyone, I just did a quick Google search to see if there's been any commentary on social media. I did find two on UDISC that I thought I would share with you, and they're both very recent. The first one says, awesome rec facility and well-maintained course. Great intro to Arkansas disc golf. And the second one said, definitely would play again, some technical and some wide open. And then for additional observations, I just noted that a lot uh, many of the signs along the disc golf course are beginning to show signs of age and some mold growth. So we might want to just keep our eye on them um, and if it should come to pass and we need to, you know, just to keep them nice and clean. And then finally, I attended, and I can never say this word, Joan, Tai Chi. Okay, I, I attended the demonstration on Wednesday, expecting it to be a demonstration and it was participation. So I participated. Well, I wasn't dressed properly, but anyway, the instructor, I didn't catch his name because I got there late. Great guy. Not only, Sarah again? His name's Eric. Eric. Not only did he tell you what to do, but he explained how and why, which really makes it stick with you so you could go home and remember and, 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 and do it again. So I thought it was really good. There was over 20 people there. They were very engaged, wide range of ages and skill levels. Um, and it looked like a lot of people were signing up for the class, so I thought that was a really good turnout. And then if I move on to Loch Lomond, again, the same afternoon, very low activity levels that day. Um, it was the day after the um, fundraiser for the um, animal shelter, um, and it was well picked up. I mean, you, you wouldn't have really known that anybody had been there. There were, however, some trash cans overflowing, which is very unusual for that, so maybe it was just tied to that, perhaps. Um, this is odd that I never noticed it before, but when you're walking the trail, there is a sign that says, no motorized vehicles on walking trail. But it's facing Glasgow. But you would never be coming from there because there's no way you could drive from there. It's like not facing where you would read it. It's just, it seems to be in an odd direction, so it just doesn't add value. I'll check it out. Yeah, I, I can't, a year and a half, I never noticed it. And then just that a very large branch had fallen from a tree. It's not a hazard right now, but it was pretty big. The rest of the tree looks stable, so I think you're good. That was all. Um, Kathleen, would you like to do Blowing Springs? Yes. Uh, I went out this past Saturday. The park looked great as usual. The grounds were manicured. Trails were cleared. Campsites were in full swing and busy for fall. Flea in the Park was also in full swing. It was on its second day. Uh, I went in the morning, but it had already picked up a bit when I was leaving. It seemed to be a really great turnout again. Uh, the parking was super organized. The shuttles were running. There were activities for kids and families, which I thought was great. All of the POA employees were incredibly friendly and helpful, and Joan and Jessica did a great job. Um, I ran into those two while I was there. Um, as far as member interactions, everybody I spoke with said that they uh, were glad to have the event back, and I ran into two people, or I talked to two people later on that went, and they said, um, that they'd love to go again, so I guess just wondering if it'll be happening next year. Perfect. We already planned for the first weekend in October again for awesome. next year. Awesome. That was it. Um, Brian, would you like to cover Tyree and Granton, please? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as usual, uh, Tyree and Granton both. The trash cans were being emptied. Uh, the grass looks great. Everything was mowed down and, and looking nice. Uh, a couple of things that I identified at Tyree have since been taken care of. One of them is there continued to be uh, a lot of moss, uh, other organic growth on some of the picnic tables and the, the concrete pads. But when I went out there a few days ago to check, the tables had all been cleaned. I also identified a broken clean-out pipe in the leach field at Tyree, and that uh, has since been repaired, so that was taken care of, and I appreciate that for sure, and I identified what I assumed to be a leaky closet flange in the women's restroom at Tyree. I called and left a message with Rick, and he got it taken care of ASAP, so that was wonderful. Uh, other than just identifying, uh, there's, a, I, there's a dead tree at Tyree that uh, would need to probably be removed at some point in the future, and uh, uh, I think it would be kind of nice if we could get rid of some of the uh, rotted stumps, especially around the, the playground area. 
Uh, I did talk to some people that were picnicking out there, and uh, we did discuss those stumps, and they felt that it probably was a good idea. Although all children love to play on stumps, these stumps are they're they're rotted and they're just getting to be to be bad news. Uh, also at Tyree, uh, looks like at some point the pavilion uh, could probably stand to be freshened up a little bit. I know there's a lot of debris on the roof that may be causing uh, uh, water retention issues, which is then causing uh, water stains on the underside of the decking. Uh, so we may want to look at possibly doing some preventative maintenance on that. Uh, somebody decided to do a uh, motorcycle burnout on the shuffleboard court at Tyree. Uh, all they did was leave a black mark. They caused no real damage. Uh, I did get to talk to some folks at Tyree. Uh, one was a birthday party that was going on. I'm pretty sure the birthday girl must have been a princess based on the amount of decorations that I saw. Uh, the folks that were doing that really wanted the pavilion, uh, but the pavilion was not available. Uh, but they did enjoy, they got a nice table next to the playground in the shade on an otherwise hot day, and they really, they were just, they were enjoying the, the atmosphere, everything was great. Uh, the folks that were at the pavilion, I've never seen this at Tyree, although I've not been going to Tyree very often until just recently. I'm going to guess no less than 40 people at that picnic. It was packed as soon as you pulled in the park. It was just wall-to-wall -wall people everywhere. And I know that it was brought up in the past about that shuffleboard court and what could possibly be done with it. Well, I can tell you for a fact that there was no less than four lawn chair circles for socializing on that concrete pad. So there's your, your potential for use right there. Uh, at Granton, uh, I wasn't fortunate enough to be able to talk to anybody. Uh, everybody that was there was, was uh, launching boats or, or pulling boats out of the water. Uh, so I didn't want to bother them. Uh, one of the grills uh, has got quite a rust hole in the back side of it over by the picnic tables and probably should be replaced. My concern there would be hot ash falling out of the grill and possibly onto someone. Uh, one of the end caps, uh, Rick, if you would look into on, I think it's that far end table at Granton all the way in the back. Uh, the end cap on the bench of the table is missing and there's just that exposed aluminum from the extrusion there that somebody sliding in or out of there may end up getting a, a bit of a gash. Uh, and then also the, uh, the plastic dock that's out at Granton, the, the entryway onto that dock, the two anchors that, that hold that platform uh, are just, they're just sharp metal that's sticking out of there. And I'm thinking people in flip-flops or something similar getting on and off of the dock, they, if they brush against that, I would be a little concerned about what may possibly happen. Uh, just a, a possible down the road uh, for Granton. Uh, I personally wouldn't mind to see the parking lot restriped at some point. Uh, things are pretty faded. It's hard to really see the, the designations for parking areas, et cetera. And I did mention there again that uh, uh, I didn't get a chance to talk to anyone. It's always busy at Grant when I go by there. I'm usually by there about three times a month. But it always seems to be launching or retrieving boats. So it's a, apparently a popular ramp. Uh, and that's all I've got. Brian, thank you for your report. Cindy, would you like to do Lake Avalon? OK, I was there early this morning to catch the sunrise, which was beautiful. Um, but nobody else there quite that early. So I didn't talk to anyone, um, but the parks looked clean, well kept. Um, the bathrooms were locked, I guess it was too early for that, but the porta potty was clean. Um, the volleyball net was still up, which was great. There was like a line of chairs that people had lined up watching the game. So that's still getting use. Um, other than that, yeah, nothing else to report. Looks, looks good. Great, thank you. Scott could not make it tonight. He sent in his report. He does uh, Reardon uh, Hall and the tennis. He had no action items, and he did not have any member interaction, so he had nothing for us this month. Uh, Mary, would you like to do Lake Ann and London Park? 
So I went out on Saturday and had a magical morning by myself and got to kind of check things out, got a lot of pictures of the area. When I was able to check out London Park, um, everything looks fantastic. Everything looks well maintained. Only area of concern is just that front driveway, which I know you guys are addressing. So there's not really anything to be done. I did speak to a lady when I was there. She was uh, playing with her Weimariner. She brings her dog down there off leash, which I think is a great use of that space because there's not a lot of people that go down there. She has them on a clicker because I know you've got to have some control of your animals. But she said that her and like three or four other people come down multiple times a week and run with their dogs, and it's such a great place for that. And she really loves it. Um, the waterfall looked great. Um, the sinkhole obviously is completely fixed. It looks like, are we filling like in now? It looks like well, it's still down. Well, it, 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 Sorry. it's not that we are filling it. Mother Nature is not filling it. Very well. Okay, that's what I was wondering. I was like, it looks like everything's fixed. And I was like, but it still seems like it's yeah. really low. Uh, uh, we can't just turn the water on. Yeah. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> So uh, that looked all good and wonderful. Um, and then when I went to check out the park side, everything looked really good over there. Um, the only thing is still that bench that needs to be fixed. Do we have any plans or is that just like on the list of stuff? It's, it's on the list of stuff. Totally makes sense. Okay. And then um, I was able to meet with a couple of other people on Lake Ann. One was a gentleman that was here riding the trails from Dallas. And he says that he loves it here, the weather's good, it's beautiful. If only he could convince his wife to move here, that would be great. Um, and the other one was a gal, she was renting an Airbnb off Lake Ann, and uh, she was here from Wisconsin. And she's like, there's so much more stuff to do here than I thought that there would be. She's like, we're going to come back. So we're making a really good showing, especially to out-of-town people. So kudos to you guys. Thank you, Mary. Matt, are you still on Zoom? I saw you earlier. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, thank you. Okay, so I went, uh, went out to the range not too long after the last meeting and there were five people shooting, three were shooting pistols, two were shooting rifles. Everything looked great and clean like it usually does. Gun range area is in good shape. Bathrooms are always clean. Shelters and benching are in good shape. All the concrete surrounding the area is in good shape. Uh, the parking lot is always in good shape. That area is always clean. The walkways are clean, no trip hazard, all the debris is picked up. Uh, I noticed that the hours are changing, but the signage is up out there and in good shape. So it kind of shows the hours and rules of the range. Uh, the only thing I had last time was that area for review was the stop, no shooting. Now I know I went out not too long after last meeting, so I don't know if that had been done. That was the only thing I had for areas for review. As for member interactions, my visit was a little shorter than usual, usual, but I spoke to one younger gentleman. He said that he shoots handguns here a lot and likes the area, very pleased with it. Really for additional observations, I didn't have anything at this time. And that, that striping should be taken care of now, Matt. Oh, good deal, good deal. All right, thank you for that. Thank you, John. And Chris, you want to take us home with uh, Tanyard Creek and the Trails and Greenway? I'd be delighted. I'd be delighted with my mic on. <laughs> Over at Tanyard Creek, I visited this morning, a little bit early. There wasn't a whole lot of people out there, just some dog walkers and early morning hikers, and everything out there looks fine. Um, it's just nothing really out of the ordinary to mention. I did talk to Randy Ham, and the only item to consider would be that the volunteers are ready to tackle uh, improvement on the south end of the Dave Weimer Bridge. Uh, and they need a little assistance with the grading of that path around there um, to get that done. So he asked me just to remind you that they're ready, and that's, that's Tanyard Creek. Everything's in good shape there. Over uh, on the trails in the Greenway, everything is fine there too. I talk to a lot of folks out on the trails often. I'm on the mountain bike patrol, and you know, there's really nothing bad to say about the trails. A lot of people have moved here because of them, and they simply express their amazement and uh, the fact that we're lucky to have such a great resource. Uh, with that, there is one thing one of my um, fellow mountain biker 
patrollers did notice on the bridge on the south upper trail of Blowing Springs. Underneath it, it looks like the, I don't know the terminology, but if it was a building, it would be a joist. Um, one of the supports is, is looking like it's coming a little bit loose. Does it look like it's in any imminent danger? I included a photograph of it in my written report, and it just needs to uh, go on the list. It's also been, um, Chuck Woods has also been notified of that as well. So uh, that should be well understood. And I think that would be it for the Trails and the Greenway. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. All right, that wraps up our amenity reports. Thank you all for your time this month. Appreciate it. Tom, would you like to lead us off? A um, couple things. Uh, year to date, as of the end of last month, activity cards are up uh, 1,974 over prior year. So year to date, we've sold 16,100, which is a huge number. Guest passes uh, up 2,110 over prior year. Boat registrations up 555 over prior year. So everything's chugging along. Uh, staff's working hard on budgets at that time of year. Uh, we'll be presenting to the community uh, the second Thursday of November at 6 p.m. I think that's the 10th, so it's a month from now we'll be presenting to the community. Uh, so we have a lot of work to do uh, in a short amount of time. But uh, things are going well. Thank you for that. Rick, you're up next. So um, just to review uh, the Lake Ann Drawdown, again, uh, we're going to begin that November the 14th. The goal is three inches a day, and to have it down by early December, about four feet. We may go an additional two feet briefly to accommodate um, some re the removal of some leaf pack and, and debris from the beach cove if, if it deems it seems necessary. Um, also, the gravel at the boat ramp. We did, um, just in the last week, uh, fix some erosion issues at the base of Lake Avalon and at uh, Rayburn, the, the, the tail of the spillway. Um, you know, one good thing about the current drought we're in is we had no water flow. So um, we were able to get that done. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I don't have a Lake Ranger report for this month, but things are starting to slow down seasonally. And we have, uh, by the end of the month, we'll be down from our summer high, um, high of 12 Rangers. We'll keep a staff of six uh, going into the winter. And um, Crown's maintenance is keeping up with the facility usage. Uh, we uh, did get a variance to put in our um, fishing dock at Lake Windsor from the city. And uh, the dock is in place. It's not, um, it's not totally complete yet, but that'll be coming in the very near future. Um, there was a bench that was removed for the Lake uh, Windsor or the Tanyard Creek uh, waterfall overlook um, that was removed when the um, that that kind of that area was was renovated, and that has since been put back. So that is good, and it looks really good the way it was put in. Um, fall lake cleanup is ongoing on the lakes. Um, so the, the backs of the coves will get some attention for the, the trash and that kind of thing that collects over the summer. We will begin construction of a new kayak rack at uh, Tyree very soon, hopefully this week if um, our uh, skid steer loader is available. Um, just to review some of the capital requests that I'm asking for the Windsor Dam paving, uh, which is in, in bad need there. Uh, two remaining aquaculture ponds to better facilitate the fishing in, in Bella Vista and one replacement truck for the rangers that are well over 200,000 miles now. Um, we are fully staffed in all areas, knock on wood, and um, our fisheries and lakes ecology uh, area we have 1,700 remaining channel catfish that we spawned early in the summer. 
We'll be re releasing those in the next month or so in Lake Avalon. We did stock the rest of the lakes with uh, 8,750 channel catfish last Friday. All lakes received fish except for Avalon because we're doing our own there. Um, our catch basins on our aquaculture ponds are complete and our lake fertilization is now complete for the year and we don't anticipate any further uh, vegetation treatments this year either. That's what I have. Thanks, Rick. I saw, um, I believe it was the Fly Tires had a really cool event for kids out there on Windsor fishing. Really well received, looked like a ton of fun, a lot of good social media about it. It looked like a great event. Yeah, th they do that uh, at least twice a year. There's two area elementary schools that, that do that. Um, kind of a um, ecology day. Um, they have different stations set up. They help, they, they have a fishing demonstration with the kids, let the kids fish. They also learn from, from our um, team of biologists about uh, aquatic life and that kind of thing. And so that they uh, kind of took a break during COVID from that, but they're, they're back at it full swing now. It's a good no, program. It, it looked really good. Yeah. Thank you for that. John, how are you? You're up next. I uh, don't have a whole lot, uh, but as I talked about last month, uh, starting in September, we get a lot more busy over at both gun ranges. Uh, we definitely did that. Uh, September attendance was pretty much on par with last year's attendance. October, however, is off to a great start. Uh, we had some tournaments and that sort of thing last month that were slightly less attended than we otherwise would have liked, but I think some weather played a part in that. It was still pretty warm. Uh, but like I said, October is off to a great start. We uh, are back up to full staff, as Rick said. We haven't been able to say that in a while, so that's really nice. Classes are full. Uh, we may end up putting some additional classes in, uh, but I'll be kind of keeping an eye on that to uh, figure that out. Uh, and then lastly, we did replace a section of concrete over at Trap and Skeet on the northwest side of the building that had become badly weathered, it had become a light trip hazard. So that's been replaced here very recently. And that's all I got. Thank you for that. Joan, I know you personally ordered that beautiful weather for the flea in the park. You couldn't have done that any better. Um, I happened to be there as well, Kathleen, and um, a lot of comments about the quality of the vendors and the decent prices of, of items for sale, so a lot of good feedback. And I also thought that Airstream thing going on was pretty cool. Maybe you could shed some light on that for us, too. That was fun. Sure. Uh, yeah, we really lucked out with the weather. It's always uh, hard to know in October, but yeah, we were blessed. Um, we believe this was our biggest flea in the park uh, yet. This was our fourth annual. We had been off for two years due to COVID. Um, we're estimating we had minimum of 700 people, probably closer to 1,000, but it's hard to tell because I didn't get a counter in place. Um, and uh, for those of you that weren't um, out and about this weekend, um, it was a two-day event, Friday and Saturday at Blowing Springs. We shut down the entire back of the park, although the deer garden is open, uh, which is a compliment to what we do. We had some live music. Uh, we have a photo op area. Kathleen mentioned the kids' zone. Um, on Saturday, we had tree pumpkin painting and some games, and this is the first time in the four years that we actually ran out of pumpkins, but it was perfect timing. It was at the end of the day. Um, and so, um, again, lots of feedback that, you know, the diverse, I, I was pretty selective on the vendors this year, um, both in trying to keep it diverse so that there weren't three soaps, for instance, because that takes away from each other's sales and all that. Um, but we had quite a few vintage and antique, uh, vendors, which Judy next to me was one of those and she had a great booth and, um, attracted a lot of people. Um, so really thankful that everything went well. Um, and Kathleen mentioned that everybody was really friendly on our team. It takes a village. It takes everybody in recreation. And I don't mean just the managers. We have to pull people from Branchwood and Reardon and everything to make it happen. So I'm blessed with a great team. Um, as far as the Airstream rally, um, I'm not going to lie. On Friday, I was a little worried. We have school traffic with Cooper. I had 25 Airstreams, so that's a rally. So they come in, they've been coming in every year, except they took one year off because of COVID. 
Um, and it just so happened this year they wanted the same weekend as Flea in the Park. So there were 25 Airstreams. They arrive in about a 45 minute um, window. And so that can back up traffic, but it, it all went really well. They are a pretty well oiled machine. They have three guys that come in early and are the official parkers for the people who aren't so great at parking RVs because that's a knack. Um, and so as you drove out of the park, you probably noticed as many did to see that many Airstreams lined up. It, there's nothing better than an Airstream. And um, so it was pretty cool. And they've been enjoying the park. They came to flee in the park. They're also touring around Northwest Arkansas. Today they were over at uh, the Walton Museum and, um, um, you know, they will see Crystal Bridges and all that. Um, as Macy mentioned, um, for the most part, everything's going really well with Metfield and Branchwood taking on the brunt of uh, Reardon Fitness folks. Um, we've had to make some creative choices, and of course, on occasion, I'll get a request for a piece of equipment, but we only have so much space, so what we did is we tried to keep it where we could put as many in machines that would uh, accommodate the high demand uses. So again, yeah, it's been going very well. Um, just in case you're here, Deborah, you didn't mention this, but if you're not a disc golfer, you might not know, but along with some alleged vandalism uh, on four um, pads, a whole bridge went away missing from disc golf at Branchwood. We're still trying to figure that out. If you, yeah, it's a bridge that goes up in the hill because we have some more difficult challenging, yeah. So Trey will be working on that. We have a bridge that we took out of Blowing Springs that we've been saving and we're gonna see if we can rebuild it. So, but that's, that's not an easy thing to do and it does need a bridge. So if you hear anything about that, we're well aware we'll be working on it. Oh, not in Velvet, uh, I can't, I can't tell you. It's a kind of, yeah, they wanted it bad, yeah. Um, Reardon and um, um, around the pool, you may notice some big storage containers. Um, so we've rented three storage containers. One is down in the large parking lot near where member services will go. One is in the pool parking lot and one is over by uh, the restrooms behind the pavilion at Kingsdale. So we'll be stashing stuff that doesn't have to be in climate control in there. So that's what that's all about. Um, today, right now, um, the city community development planning meeting is going on, so we should get our final blessing on those projects. Um, so that's going on now. And um, an update on Bluebird Trail, which is the new trail behind um, Premier Dermatology over by Casey's. Um, they are in the process of building the small pavilion now. I've relocated it into a middle area of grove of trees. It was gonna go closer to Premier Dermatology, which would be really not very attractive from a noise perspective. Um, so that's gonna be probably, you know, weather permitting, that'll be done this week. Um, I will put benches in there um, over time. They're also working on the parking lot. The trail proper is done, but there's no infrastructure in place. So that will be a process. Um, forthcoming, but we're really excited about the work that's been done. It's it's really, really good. Uh, I mentioned this last time, but that pavilion will simply be a drop-in spot. It's a smaller pavilion. It's going to be about a 12 by 20 pavilion, really nice looking, but it's really for people to rest while they're maybe watching their kids bike or walk or play on um, a feature sort of natural bouldering area that'll be there, or for people that just want to place to go in the shade, it won't be rentable because um, there won't be a way to drive to it or anything. It's really for the bikers, hikers, etc. cetera. Um, Metfield pickleball fencing is in progress. Um, the outer fence is done, but I believe my vendor is having some supply chain issues. We don't have gates yet and we don't have the middle, middle fence. So I'm waiting for word on that, but um, we have um, put some caution tape around the openings because we did have some kids that rode their bikes on it and shocking, you know, get some mud on it, but it's not, it doesn't hurt the surface. It's just a little dirty looking. 
Um, Avalon volleyball and restrooms. Yes, the restrooms are unlocked usually by 7.30 when the Rangers get on duty and we lock them back at, um, in the evenings. And then we try and keep the volleyball net, just so you know, up until like early December, depending on weather, because there are people that want to still enjoy the park. So just so you know, and then we will take it down when the weather gets colder. Also, that bathroom will go under lock when winter hits for about three months, give or take. And we leave the porta pit there all the time. Um, just an update on dog days of summer and the wiener takes it all. Those are two animal shelter events. You may have read, read um, the article in the Vista, um, but um, Nancy, who's the director of uh, the animal shelter has been really happy with both of those events. The dog days of summer, they raised well over $1,000, which is probably close to their record. They had about almost 100 dogs. It was great if you weren't there. Um, Wiener takes it all. That's one of their biggest fundraisers. Their corporate sponsorship was down this year. Unfortunately, they didn't raise as much, but they're still thrilled. Um, all the money they raised, which was, I think, $10,000 plus was all from entries. So that's that's pretty remarkable. Um, but always remember to support your dog, um, dog shelter. We had actually, we put their booth in the prime location at Flea of the Park. They had a lot of traffic and all, everything that they sold or people donated for, played a little game or whatever, all went to the animal shelter. So we're pretty proud of the partnership we have with them also. Um, Nancy was thankful for the charitable giving arm of the POA. We donated to them as well. So um, that was really good. And the last thing that I have to share is that um, the marina will be closing this last weekend. So starting next week, it will be closed for the season. We had a great, great season. Um, October, the boat rentals have been largely like an hour cruise up from previous years. Um, people will rent the boat for an hour, go out, See if the fall foliage is starting or just check it out now that some of the leaves are, are falling. So um, the team over there has done a great job. That's it for me. Thank you. We've got a lot going on. And Judy, finally. Oh, wait, hold on. Joan forgot, forgot something. I got forgot one important thing. Um, we were right from Flea in the Park. We get right ready for Not So Haunted Mini Golf. So we will be setting up for that this week. And it goes live or good on Saturday. And uh, remember that's up from Saturday and through Halloween. It's um, de decorated areas. People can play the golf course or just come out and look at the um, decorations. We have a photo op, several photo op areas and um, it, we're really excited about it. So we're building off of last year. It was very successful last year. Now I'm done. Thank you. Hey, Judy. Thank you. Um, so as far as marketing goes, we're kind of back to normal after three for three. So we were real pleased with the outcome, of course, as I'm sure you all, all were. Um, uh, the, we're working on the winter magazine. I will say uh, in regards to the magazine, we, um, we moved out of the airport um, the April when COVID began. And um, we have not been able to distribute magazines there until uh, September, which was really exciting. They no longer have the booth, but they allowed us to put a rack out um, just for the magazines. Um, the gentleman who I work with there um, let me know that the, the magazines that I initially gave him were gone. He happened to find a box of magazines that were in the storage from April of uh, 2020 when they pulled everything and put those out and they're gone. <laughs> so. Um, it's a really great distribution place for us, and it gives us, you know, a lot of a lot of exposure for our advertisers for people coming in and um, and leaving. So, um, I, I flee in the park. I just have to give my um, shout out to to Joan and her staff because, oh my gosh, those people work so hard. My legs would have been falling off if I were them, and uh, the walking and running and the great way that they treat. Um, treat the folks that are vendors as well as the people that are there. And um, uh, we were, we are not professionals. So we were in a, one of the garage sale class where people are, and we did very well. And, but I did hear great feedback 
um, from the vendors around us how great it was and, and they did very well with it. And I am one of those, um, we have a new Winnebago camper that I could not park. So um, we'll look into parking guys. <laughs> so, but um, other than that, um, we're marketing is, is back to normal and um, working hard. So if I can help you in any way, let me know. Thank you, Judy. That concludes our agenda. Does anybody else have any closing thoughts, comments, concerns, anything we need to cover? I do. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Joan, I wanted to add in that the um, gentleman that I talked to over at the at Betfield, he was um, he he wasn't a pickleball player, but since he saw your courts, he now wants to play pickleball. And also the new, the retaining wall that you added to, there's a couple of boards that are starting to um, buckle up on the ends where, the, where they're staked down. So you might want to look into that. Over by the playground, maybe? Yes, yes. All right, Macy, thank you. All right, if there's nothing else, meeting's adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.